All right, so let's go to our first coding tutorial. I'm going to open Visual Studio. I'm going to click create a new project. I have C Sharp all platforms games. That's why I have uh, model game templates if you install them. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're working with this one, the cross platform one. So I'm going to select it. Next, I'm going to call this game club programming tutorial one I'm going to hit create so the file is here that special file game1.cs that I mentioned before is here so I'm going to double click it to open and you have all the methods here right variables area uh, general information about the game, where we initialize the logic, where we load content like files, sounds, and everything, update where we update the data and the logic of our game, and where we draw the stuff to the screen, right? Uh, if we pay attention to the draw method, we have here graphics device dot clear, and it passes a color that is this cornflower blue. What this does is it asks uh, the graphics device to change all the colors inside our screen to blue so all the colors all the pixels to blue so if i run this i can see the result here right and if i pass a different color for example i'm gonna pass it here like green and i'm gonna save it and then i run it changes all the pixels to green right but i'm just gonna go back to that cornflower i like the blue I'm gonna check if it's compiling and yes it runs the code all right so now let's go here to the variables right i want to add a new variable we're gonna hit enter here to add a new line and you can see that all the variables are private i'm gonna keep that parent i'm gonna make it private what is a private variable it means it can just be used by this file right a different file here in the system cannot use it Right. For example, if I try to use, uh, I create this variable here and I try to use it inside this program here, it won't work, right? So just here. So private, I want to create a variable of a type called texture2d. This means it's a picture, it's something that has a texture, right? And I'm gonna give it the name as underscore layer. You can see here that everything here has a underscore. Uh, it's a convention to have member variables named this, but you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to keep the pattern here. So I created a variable, right? It's a texture 2D. Uh, it doesn't do anything different right now. It's just a variable. Now, if it's a texture 2D, I want to load some content inside it, right? How do I load content like files into a mono game project? Well, if we go here to the solution explorer you see you have a folder set content so if i click here and expand you have this file here right i'm gonna right click on it and click on opening containing folder so this is gonna take me to windows explorer and locate where the file is and now i'm gonna double click this file so i have this program running this is the content pipeline this is how we load content into our project uh, and here you have the options to add a new item, an existing. I'm going to load an existing item. I'm going to move to my downloads. I have this uh, sketch of a ship that Laura drew. I'm going to open it. Yes, I want to copy the file to the directory. Once I've done this, I'm going to click here to build. It succeeded. And then I'm going to save. Okay, now I can close this. I can go back to my Nodal game project. And if you see now, that image of the ship is now here, right? It's inside the content folder. All right, now how do we attach this image to this texture variable that we just created? To do that, we have to move to the load content method, right? So we go here to load content. I'm gonna add a new line. You can delete the green line, but I won't delete so you know uh, it's it's going to help you understand what each method does so i'm going to click here and i'm going to say player is equal to content dot load less or greater than and inside here i have to pass the type of the content that i'm loading well i'm loading a texture 2d so i'm going to type texture 2d and here in parentheses i have to pass the name of the file 
and the name of the file is ship. You don't have to pass the type, we already specified here, just the name of the file. And you close with semicolon, all lines in C sharp, uh, all the statements have to end in a semicolon so that the compiler knows that line is ended. All right, I'm gonna save. If I run the game now, nothing is gonna happen, right? Because we didn't ask it to draw that image to the screen, we just ask it to store that image inside this variable here. Now, how do we draw it to the screen? Well, we have to move to the draw method, that's the last one here. And here, we're gonna use something called sprite batch. A sprite batch is a technique to render stuff, right? We don't need to understand how it works, we just need to understand now how we can use it. And how do I know we have one? Well, one of the variables that are created uh, for us is this sprite batch type name underscore sprite batch. So this is the one you're gonna use, right? I'm gonna come here and say underscore sprite batch. IntelliSense already gives me that suggestion. I'm gonna hit tab to complete dot begin. I have to begin it, right? Before I do anything. So I'm gonna add a new line and now I'm gonna use sprite batch to call the method draw, right? So draw is a method and it has three diff uh, seven different possibilities, right? And it takes many different things here. For now, I just want to use the most simple one. So I'm just gonna say, I want to draw and I have to pass a texture. What is the texture I want to draw? That's the player. What is the other parameter I have to pass to this method? Uh, it's suggesting here a rectangle. I'm not gonna add a rectangle. I'm just gonna add a vector to position. This is just a coordinate pair with X and Y to locate it on the screen. So I'm gonna say new vector two. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's say 200, 200, right? That's more or less half of the screen that uh, Monogame creates for us. We can change that later, but for now, this is it. So I pass a texture, I give it a position, and I need to give it a color. So I'm gonna type color dot, and I'm gonna say white. Why white? White means we're not changing the color. Just use the color that the texture comes with, right? And I have to close the statement with the same column. So again, I start sprite batch. I use the method draw. I pass three parameters here, the texture I want to draw, the position on the screen where I want to draw it, and the color that I'm going to use. And I have to close the sprite batch. So sprite batch dot end. So I close the sprite batch here. I'm going to save and now I'm going to run it. And here you can see something weird, right? The image is so big that we have a hard time seeing it on our screen, right? So we could do different things here. We could just go there and scale the image manually, or we could scale through code. So let's use code to do this. So let's go back to our draw method here. And instead of using this vector two, we're gonna say new, rectangle so we're gonna create a rectangle a rectangle takes four parameters right the first one is the x position so i'm gonna say 200 the next is the y position i'm gonna say 200 the next is the width so i'm gonna play with a hundred no i'm gonna play with 50 on the width and because it's a rectangle i'm gonna say 100 on the height so again, the X on the screen, the Y on the screen, the width and the height, right? So I'm passing these four parameters to the rectangle and the image is gonna be uh, draw inside this rectangle here. I'm gonna save and when I hit play, I now have the image in a proper scale. If I want to change this, I can just come here and say, okay, I don't want this to be 75 and this to be 150, right? And, all right, you see that? Not really uh, what we want, so, oh, no. That's not it, right, 100, so. All right, let me save it now. Okay, now we should have it. 
all right so it's bigger on our screen and if i want to change the position on the screen i change these two parameters here for example i want to add it to the origin like the zero zero pair of coordinates here so that we can find where the origin is and of course it's here right so if here is zero any positive number brings it below to the screen here and positive numbers take it to the right side here so zero zero is here this would be uh for example a hundred and uh zero on the y and this here might be a hundred six hundred i think that's the card uh, resolution of the screen right so now one thing that could be interesting for you is to go by let me go back here one thing that could be interesting as a challenge for you would be to draw a different version of this image with a different color on the different corners of the screen, right? I'm going to show some of the things you do here. Uh, if I want to draw one more sprite, what I have to do? Well, I just have to use this method again. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. And I'm going to change the position. Let's say I want... I think it's 800, I'm not really sure, and I'm going to change the color to red. I'm going to save it, All right? So the position on the screen on the X axis still going to be zero on the Y. Uh, the size is going to be the same, just changing the color here. OK, I save, I run. Wow, it's not showing here, it's just showing the original one. So this is telling me that's 800 is just too much. I'm going to make this 400 and see where it goes. Oh, there you go. The color didn't change that much because it's a mostly transparent uh, image, right? But you can see it's definitely a, a bit darker than that one. Now, if this is 400, maybe this is 600, right? So let's try 600. All right, uh, it's a bit more, so 650. So you can play with this around so that you cannot understand how this thing works. All right, it's more, right? maybe 700 is what you're looking for. Of course, there is also the size uh, of the width, right? Yeah, a bit more than 700, but you got the idea, right? So now, can you try and draw another version of this image here with a different color? and another one here. I think this would be a great challenge for you. This video is bigger than I would like. So this was our first tutorial. I hope you got some new knowledge here. I will see you all on the next meeting.